Hello, guys and girls. Welcome to Lunatic Astrology. I am your astrologer, Lori Lothian. And guess what we're having up in the news story today? The upcoming moon, Leo, new moon at five degrees of Leo on the 28th of July, which brings some distorted gossip, some, some maybe uh, misrepresentation of details and facts, but also incredibly powerful luck for each of us because it is in a trine to Jupiter. And while Jupiter will station retrograde on the same day, which so therefore I'm calling this the delayed luck new moon, it indeed does have a silver lining. Now I want to make a contextual statement about this because I'm doing a separate video on what I'm calling the big boom. That is going to be Mars, Uranus, and the North Node, all at 18 degrees of the sign of Taurus, which hasn't happened since 325 BC, just during the time of Alexander the Great, in fact, just before Alexander the Great passed away. <laughs> so there's a whole story coming in another, another video. This rare, rare, rare event will have a big impact on the world, and because it becomes perfected on July 31st and August 1st, it will be a part of the energy of this new moon, but I'm doing it separately because the new moon is so good in its own right that there's no reason to like mush this beautiful, lucky, positive, positive moon up with the muckier stuff that goes with the big boom. And they're sort of separate stories, although they will overlap. Okay. And lastly, I want to make a point about this particular new moon. It does involve, in my humble opinion, some big news coming up from the U.S., from Joe Biden. Now, this is before the boom, or this is a part of the boom, and it's mostly good. However, there is a possibility that there's something going on with Joe Biden's health. Now, in his solar return chart, it looks like he's going to be a wartime president, but Mars in Scorpio in his 10th house solar return from his November birthday without going into too much detail, it's stealth war. Some people are saying things like, is that Ukraine situation a proxy war? Don't get me in there, I'm not taking sides. But there is stuff going on in the chart that also suggests in the month of July, in both his solar arcs, solar return, and in his natal sky, that July, August into September, may be the disclosure or, the, or of a health challenge that he's undergoing in his life or that someone close to him is undergoing. I'm not too sure which. And we're gonna go more into that when I show you the chart itself. But I do do the beginning of these videos. So just in case you don't know, we're talking about mundane astrology, meaning the way the current sky can affect the collective. And if that interests you, please stick around. But then in the old signs, it's really unique to you, specific, specifically your rising sign. Okay, it's going to be always the more accurate. It represents you coming into the earth plane. Um, you're probably wondering where I am, by the way. I'm with my sister. I'm at my sister's place in Northern Ontario. And I just wanted to share something about her. See that doll there? She's an amazing Reiki healer. And I just had a miracle healer dealing with her of a, a chronic uh, SI joint infl inflammation and uh, about seven other people just went to see her because I shouted her out of my newsletter and they're all having these incredible results. So because Nancy, my sister who does advanced Reiki and pendulum healing and a bunch of cool stuff is one of my favorite people in the world for healing. I'll put a link to her website below. She has a summer sale, 30% off. Just check it out. And also please check out my description box if you don't mind, because my sky reader course is taking a wait list for the fall for beginner astrology. I had a great group. I have my broadcast your astrobiz course coming up to learn how to make an astrology business get off the ground and be successful at it financially not just in terms of likes and shares and lastly um the other thing i have going on coming up is my divine timing masterclass in september check out all my classes below check out everything in my description box i got a lot of free goodies for you as well <laughs> let's get moving and talk about this sky and let me show it to you and don't forget like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join my Cosmic Moonshine Forecast newsletter, 30% off any reading with me. Plus, you also get access to my 2022 All Signed videos, 60 videos. I mean, 60 minutes times 12 videos for each sign. So you can get the bundle and listen to your sun, moon, and rising for free. If you sign up for my newsletter, you get the auto responder <laughs> delivering that to your mailbox right away. Check your spam folder. All right. So here's what this moon looks like. This is a Leo, kingly, big hearted, courageous energy. As you can tell, that's a Leo vibe. Oops, I'm with Joe. Let me fix that. We'll get back to Joe in a bit. I apologize. And that's another Joe chart. Righty, I thought I had it cued and I didn't. My apologies. So here we have the moon. Now there's a lot of planets in here. 
try not to get distracted. I may call that for us. Uh, I just had it up for the Joe Biden story. Um, something I want to point out here is that this is a moon at five degrees and 38 minutes. There's a thunderstorm going on outside my window. If you hear it, I don't know. It's starting to lighten up. Um, it's not booming right now. But the reason I'm telling you that is the moon is at five degrees and 38 minutes. And there's a numerological formula for that particular thing where you add up eight and, and three is 11 and add five and it's 16. Well, 16 is the is the tower card in the tarot. And I just want to point out that, you know, there's a big boom energy of some kind of shock and awe vibe um, coming with that separate video. Watch for it. Um, Uranus moon and North node. It could look like an earthquake, a tidal wave could look like one of those meteors of the, uh, <laughs> that are falling to earth that week, hitting the earth big time. There's a big, uh, meteor shower come delta i think it's called coming out of the aquarius part of the sky constellation aquarius happens every year i'm just trying to make sense of it there could be a ufo discovery an underwater uncovery i mean there's a lot of cool stuff that can happen that's positive um that new telescope could find something new but that's a boom the tower is not always negative some kind of paradigm shifting shock and awe energy that the moon is already embodying before this mars uranus and north node thing perfect First, Uranus North Node perfect in a perfect conjunction on the 31st, and then Mars joins the fray on August 1st already. So let's put it this way. Between July 27th and August 4th or so, we're in this vibe of a big boom of some big world events and personal events as well. Um, so the other thing I want to point out in the sky uh, relative to the what I'm calling this uh, delayed lucky uh, moon. The reason there's a delay is twofold. I'm going to show you what this looks like to make it really easy for you to see. Just take a look at this. Um, I hate when that does that. Like I can't see if I'm still sharing with you guys, I apologize, but I just want to simplify and get rid of some of the extra planetary gunk here so that you're not having to squint at what this chart is trying to tell you. You know, it's, I'm simplifying basically. Ascendant, descendant, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, we can keep Hygieia in there, though. Okay, let's see what we've got now. Now, um, am I still sharing that chart? Yeah. Yes, I am. Wonderful. So long story short, you can see that on this new moon, you've got this beautiful flow to Jupiter, who is still direct, but almost stopping stationary. So he's really not to our visible eyes moving forward. And he's going to turn around later that day. So it's something like the moon is happening around two in the afternoon. Jupiter goes into his retrograde motion. Oh, approximately at 4.30 Eastern time in the afternoon. And then finally the moon perfects, it's trying to Jupiter around 7.30 in the evening that day. It's a bit of a complicated narrative, right? Cause I mean, the moon is flowing toward Jupiter who's also going to about to go backwards. So to me, I'm gonna say the story of this blue flow is delayed promise. This is a new moon. The full moon will be February 5th, 2023. Jupiter will be retrograding backwards through the sign of Aries, and then he will slide October 28th back into his home sign of Pisces. Now, even though he's going retrograde, that could still be a very fortunate period of time from October 28th to December 20th. So just keep that in mind. You may find that things are still rather sweet in terms of what Jupiter can do, even though he's backwards because he's in his home sign. But also I would point out that on November 24th of this fall is when he stations into direct motion. So if there's delayed luck for each of us, and I'm gonna give you this in your all signs, I would maybe think that what this new moon is promising, which involves luck. Yes, you'll see some signs of it in the two weeks that follow, but possibly, possibly November the 24th, as he goes direct and starts moving in direct motion till December 20th in his home sign, this could be where the payout is, okay? Don't forget the full moon on February 5th is sort of the culminating energy of all of this, all right? And I wanna point out one more thing. Um, this is, don't forget all signs is coming. It's always good though, if you wanna learn about the real world and astrology. Didn't mean to keep Venus there, but there she blows. Um, she will support that big boom, by the way, by giving it some soft edges, but we'll do that again in another video. Hygieia, the goddess of hygiene is here. You know, mask up, mask up, hand sanitize. She's also health and health and wellness and stuff to do with medicine and medical breakthroughs. Well, Hygieia is sitting here at seven degrees and the moon is squaring her. 
All right, now that's not necessarily a positive development in terms of whatever this moon is about. It could also, with Mercury here, involve messages and news and information, right? Because the moon will move forward, first connect with Jupiter, but eventually connect with that, catch up with that Mercury and Leo. So this would be a world leader or a politician or somebody in a position of power, like the head of the CDC or the Centers of Disease Control, the Center of the WHO, World Health Organization, making some kind of uh, unwelcome announcement or difficult announcement regarding health challenges, whether it's monkeypox, whether it's another COVID variant, who the heck knows, or maybe more restrictions around COVID, uh, many ways that can play out, who knows. Um, in Joe Biden's natal chart, okay, I'm just going to tell you guys this, I don't think I'm going to necessarily show you all the stuff. Let me say a few things about why I think Joe Biden could be involved in whatever this announcement is. First of all, Joe Biden is um, living a particularly difficult year. It's this eighth house perfection age, which can involve illness. And the good news about it, or death, is that he's got Jupiter there in Cancer exalted, protecting him throughout this age. Okay, so there's the good news. All right, so just keep that in mind. But the second part of the story is that he also, in his solar return chart, has Saturn in dignity on his solar return ascendant in Aquarius. That's November to November's birthday. Well, that can often be a sign of, uh, of enduring and persevering and being you know, stoic and, and being strong and disciplined. It also can be a challenge in health, particularly when you are a senex or a wise man or wise woman, an older person. Saturn on the ascendant can also be depleting of one's health. And lastly, in his, maybe I'll show you why not, right? I'll just give you a quick peek of that for all you astro geeks out there like me. Take a quick look at his natal chart. Uh, he's born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, November 20th, 42 at 8.30 a.m. Well, the interesting part to me uh, is that the, there is this north-south node transit going through houses 12 and 6. And it's Rahu or the North Node moving through his house of illness or sickness. And normally that may not concern me that much. I might be, you know, yay, maybe he'll amplify his health or find better health protocols or something. But then Rahu also exacerbates and inflames anything, right? And he's got a dignified moon in Taurus sitting in the house of health and health shit uh, protocols and work and service. So that's not so bad, right? Not so bad at all. However, however, it is a particularly... Mm, dynamically interesting time when you add to his chart the solar return of uh, solar arcs which happen to be basically a progress chart um it's it's almost like every planet moves ahead by a year but not quite it's on average so here you have that comparison chart right and in this case all right in this case the progressed south node is moving through his house of sickness and has been for quite a while. It's nothing new. It's been 21 years. So he's still here to tell the, te tell the tale. But I also feel with the North Progress North Node conjunct Mercury in the house of hospitals, illnesses, uh, challenging situations or hidden enemies, this is just kind of an interestingly fraught time for him. So I don't know what I, I why I feel this other than and there's other charts galore like his solar return and this is not all about joe we'll move on to your stuff as well but i want you to see some of what i'm seeing i don't know if he's making a bold announcement regarding the ukraine or something like that or if he's also having an announcement that he has a health challenge he's going to step away a bit and but you know at the end of the day it may all work out because he's got such protection from jupiter um, in his eighth house that he's journeying through um, let me just grab his solar return and put it up as a standalone. I meant to do a standalone. Yeah, there we go. All right. So this is what's happening right now, birthday to birthday for him. And you can see his ascendant, by the way, is at three degrees, three degrees natally of Sagittarius when he was born in the 11th house of the solar return. But this is his temporary sky. And if I was to actually return the ascendant to the picture, you're going to see something. So just hang on, hang in there with me, guys. Okay. Um, I wasn't going to divest so much energy into this or channel there, but here we go, right? Just, just do that. And hopefully we're all still seeing the same sky. Yeah. Already. So here we go. So that Saturn on the ascendant can be onerous when you're elder, when you're an elder. 
Um, it does have support from the moon in the fifth house for more vitality for sure, but it's not the best placement. And you can see why I thought he might be quite very much the warlike king up here. Sun in the mid heaven puts him in a high, high place in his career. And it kind of is a, a, a place of positivity to be more of the king, the ruler, the leader, Mercury information news announcements uh, of some import and Mars. And in a solar return chart, watch a tricky, a fun trick I'm going to teach you that I've done for like five years and it works. This is a solar return, November, November, December in the second house, um, <laughs> December, January in the third, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Okay. So the 10th house is August for him, right? And so I'm concerned about what's going on in August regarding this story. Don't forget the new moon in Leo is the 28th. And you can see a health challenge here for him in the month of July. There may be a health challenge. It's not being Hygieia, not being revealed, trying to keep a lid on something. And there may be disclosures, announcements, or big events coming out of Joe for the world around sometime in August, maybe even literally the third week of August. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, we're going to move on. And there's that south node in Sagittarius. <clears throat> in his solar return chart. Um, don't forget a solar return is a snapshot of the sky, November 19th, 2021. At the time, the sun returned to its natal position of 27 Scorpio. Because that snapshot bakes in a south node in Sagittarius and he's a rising sign Sagittarius, it's another indicator of health challenges at the age of 79. Okay, enough of Joe. Hope that it's interesting to you astrology people. We're gonna go through each of the signs to talk about how this moon will bring this delayed luck to you. And I have a feeling this might be fun today because my sister has a thousand Oracle decks that we use the Sacred Tech Traveler Oracle deck. And I pick one card for each of you and I will just read the keywords on the card, obviously not the whole thing. So we just add a little spice to it. And yeah, that, what's that doll doing there? That's because when she's working at a distance, she's a distance Reiki worker. She uses the doll as, you know, the where to aim on the body parts. So it's kind of cool, right? People have asked me before when I'm here, what's that doll mean? <laughs> it's like so funny. So we're going to start with the Aries, sun, moon, and rising sign. Now, before we begin, let's start with the card so I don't forget, which I'm prone to do. Oh, I forgot one thing. Oh, yeah, Jupiter is on Salacia. So that's about, you know, distortion of facts or information. So there's a trine from Jupiter at eight degrees of Aries collaborating or traveling with the asteroid Salacia. So whatever announcements may be made about Joe and his health or whatever else, or the world at large, or even about the pandemic or the variants, I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> Salacia can be misrepresentation and distortion, can be gossip as well, so like salacious details, okay? That was an asteroid that was the wife it's about the myth of Jupiter's wife, okay? So uh, let's go for Aries and then we'll go into the astrology. Your message on the Oracle deck called the Sacred Traveler today is called Fellow Travelers. And the words you get is support is all around you. Aries, sun, moon, and rising sign. That's your lunar message for the, full, the new moon and Leo. I hope I said new moon earlier. Wow. <laughs> Gosh, sometimes I do that. I get like really, you know, weird. I say new moon, I mean full moon. Um, so I'm going to start talking about this in some detail for you guys so that you can get the gist of it. Now, last thing I want to say before I start, I know I'm going to get there. We are starting. Um, remember, please, if you know your rising sign, it will always be by far the most accurate because it represents you coming into this world being born and nobody else will have the exact time to the second even as you of course there will be others but in your location other than a twin um so it becomes a very um exact definition of your your karmic storyline in this life and your gifts and talents and all of that so let's get moving Airy sun, moon rising, and you have fellow travelers supporting you in that card. So with the new moon coming up in, in the sky, shining big, I mean, big, you know, energies, but dark sky. Um, this is a place for you that has to do with vitality, um, joy, play, fun, pleasure, romance, love, um, you know, uh, your children, and just a sense of being in, you know, that joie de vivre, or I always jokingly say, why do you get out of bed in the morning? And this is going to have a new beginning for you. It's your fifth house. It's going to have a fresh start. For people like me who have my own independent business, entrepreneurial, this is our entrepreneurial house. Now, there's a new start. And February 5th, we'll get the full big picture of it. And the luck that's delayed, I think, is coming after November 23rd. And most of the juice 
will probably happen between November 23rd and um, December 20th when Jupiter is moving direct through the last two degrees of Pisces. Okay, now he was there at the end of April. So this is a bit of a replay of the end of April. And for you guys, as you know, Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign, this is a very profound spiritual energy where some of this fortune is coming from. The 12th house is to do with your feelings of God and connection to all that is and unconditional reality and the, the karmic and Akashic record stuff. Um, it's also your un, own self undoing and addictions. If you're trying to kick an addiction, then the lucky break that comes may be the complete eradication of any craving for whatever substance does not serve you. It's also your PayPal Stripe accounts. Now, why do I know this? Because I've been researching it with my clients. It's the third from the 10th and it's sort of like the old traveling salesman barter and trade caravan energy. It's revenue you get almost like a traveling salesperson in today's world. And that is your Square, Stripe, PayPal, payment processors for credit cards, right? In our modern parlance. So you could have a surge of money, fortunes, or luck from 12th house monies coming through if this is a delayed luck moon, which I believe it is. So look for that November 23rd to December 20th. And then, you know, of course, Jupiter comes back into your sign, December 20th at five months, and you become magnanimous, kingly, queenly, full of power, full of energy, full of uh, bigness. You might gain some more weight again. You probably already felt that happen. You, you might also just feel like you're lucky. You know, you're, you're like the Midas touch vibe in a good way. Um, and that's a lovely way to start 2023. Isn't it Aries, sun, moon, and rising? Because I have sun and moon. We're going to feel really, really positive. And don't forget, when the world is falling apart and the sky is falling, chicken little and things are going to hell in the old hand basket it doesn't mean your our lives individually are we carve out microclimates of reality for our lives and i want to say that despite inflation despite pandemics and despite what's going to be a big boom of some sort i don't think that that means that we all have to go into caves underground to survive to survive it's not like that so um so i'm looking at the big sky big picture for most airy sun moon but especially rising sign people also when this um big boom happens later on we'll do another video for that you know for you guys it's a money boom for you so it could be also very much about earnings and money taking a dramatic new tactic for you over the course of the next few months because that big boom will set into motion something that energetically will last much longer than the actual event of the week at hand uh, early august and anything else I want to tell you about this particularly luscious moon uh, that is offering up some vitality, fun, play, pleasure, sexuality, romance, better time with your children, new beginnings with your children. Um, the fifth house is money speculation. Okay. Now that, but I mean, going to the casino, buying a lottery ticket, right. Going to the horse races, taking a financial speculative risk with money, like a risky stock or a penny stock even. So that kind of money that fifth house can bring because it is a house of, of money and luck and money luck is significant here and so there's something going on where if you are in the right place at the right time sometime in the two weeks after the moon you may find yourself receiving a money luck event and with venus traveling the owner of money herself, like the ruler of money, through your fourth house. It could be also very lucrative, lucky money stuff around home or real estate, etc. But also, it just may not be, but I thought I'd touch on that as well. Like a lucky break that allows you to buy a home, sell a home, or even just a lucky financial break, speculative a bit, taking a gamble for um, buying a house, thinking you won't get it, moving your property, who knows, stuff like that. All right. Uh, anything else I want to tell you about this guy that I might have forgotten? Um, let me just think about it because, you know, I had stripped the chart free of all the little itty bitty details, which I'm looking at again, minor asteroids. It might help to put them back in while I'm talking to you guys um, on the back end. Yeah, I'd say that's about it. Honestly, you do have mercury with you know, the, the world is hot. Sun is in Leo, Mercury's in Leo, fanning the flames of world heat, heat records and fires. But for you, this is fanning the flames of romance. And I would say for a lot of you, this uh, energy that's so active in your fifth house, not just the moon, but Mercury there as well, until like August the fourth or so. This is like emails, phone calls, text messages, or flirty communications, or getting on an app like Tinder or something, or a hinge and getting down with connecting with somebody. So a lot of messaging going on, lovers e e emails and stuff like that. All right. 
Hope that was enjoyable for you, Aries. Now we're going to move to the Taurians of the world. And I hope my interconnection, internet connection is solid because I'm at my sister's house and it's not my usual uh, zone of uh, doing this stuff. Okay, so shows I have internet. That's the good news. Uh, Taurus, sun, moon, rising. Let's pick a card for your Leo new moon that happens on July 28th, which has a delayed promise for luck. And let's see what we get. Mm hmm surrendering to the journey okay release control all right so taurus you need to release control end of story whatever that is to you where are you clenching in and holding on to tight it's time to surrender release let god let go let god as they always say or i often say uh, thy will not my will but now i say thy will as my will so it's a similar vibe right aligning with the flow by surrender release and letting go so here we have a situation for you taurians where and wait till we get to the big boom video coming shortly after this because it's in your sign but for this new beginning new moon blessed energy this is not so bad at all this is happening in your real estate house now it's a angular to you, meaning it squares your identity. Um, so it may feel to you uh, very much like the events that follow the two weeks of this new moon are pressuring something for you to do with your home and private life. It can, for some of you, mean a pressure to relocate, to find a new place to live, or to make some significant changes within your private domestic life and home life that are new beginnings that you will really see come to fullness in February of 22. And the luck that Jupiter wants to bring you is from the 12th house. He's sitting there in Aries at eight degrees on the day of the moon, then he goes retrograde. There's that thunder. I think you guys can hear it. So it's been thundering for two hours now. So it's like a long series of thunder. Um, I don't see lightning out the window though. So I'd say to you, the luck from the 12th house has multiple layers of meaning. Both the moon in the fourth and the 12th luck is a very spiritual moksha liberation placements about getting a level of spiritual awakening, a spiritual attainment, wisdom, coming home to some deeper truths about yourself, yourself in relationship to your family of origin or the family system from which you emerged and grew up, for example, a spiritual guide, teacher, mentor, can come through with Jupiter in your 12th house, especially with Chiron there in Aries. And so very likely that this could produce in the two weeks that follow the moon, some kind of teacher guide or some kind of course or, 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 or curriculum of learning that you wish to engage in as well. That may be outside the box of things you tried to learn or get engaged in before. I mean, this would be very uh, different maybe because it's a uh, deeper spiritual energies of the 12th. Um, the fourth house is the house of the mom. And this could also indicate a new beginning in your relationship with your mother with positive flow and support from Jupiter around the way that relationship becomes uh, refreshed or renewed in some way. Um, especially especially as the delayed promise happens. So as I said, with every sign, look to November 23rd to December 20th for a flush of luck as Jupiter moves direct from the 28th degree of Pisces is home sign in your 11th house of good spirit, which is about fairy godmothers, fairy godfathers, pennies from heaven, your wishes and dreams and, and goals for your life, uh, allies and friends who are benefactors. It's just a good house. And so you can really see some kind of sweet luck picking up for you there at the end of this time, November 23rd through to um, December 20th. And I think that's part of the delayed promise of this Leo new moon, even though the Leo new moon is technically not in conversation with your 11th house. Jupiter has gone back with the message to the 11th house and then forward again on the 28th of October. No, on the 23rd of November, that's when he's moving direct. All righty. Um, one last thing is Salacia is the gossip, you know, misinformation asteroid with Jupiter in your 12th. This is a house of hidden enemies. So there's a there's a possibility a hidden enemy like will gossip about you, but because of the trine from Jupiter, you'll probably find out about it, which is good, right? That's the silver lining in the couple of weeks that follow this moon. And you'll take that silver lining and you'll produce something positive from this situation where you discover someone may not have your back, you know, and that's a good thing to know because uh, known enemies are a lot better than hidden. And I use the word enemies you know, liberally, I mean, just someone who's not really supportive of you and may even secretly undermine you. Okay, we're going to move past that. I think that's all I want to say to you, Taurus. And, you know, Venus, the money goddess is sitting in your third house of trips and travel and local neighborhood shindigs and stuff. And I'm, I'm only going to say, oh, 
No, we're not going to talk about her. I'm going to leave her for the big boom for you. Okay, so stay, I'll save the big boom for later. Gemini, sun, moon, and other videos. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. Everyone's getting a little card today. So you got one as well. And this is from the Sacred Traveler Oracle by Denise Lynn. I really like Denise Lynn's stuff. And let's see what this moon's message for you is. Leo, new moon. It's happening on July 28th. It's going to be uh, in a trine to Jupiter as he stations retrograde. Lots of positive energy in this moon, in my humble opinion, separate from some of the challenges, the delayed luck. First light, beginning a new cycle. So for you guys, there's something about starting afresh, really beginning you in a way that is a part of what new moons are. They're seeding the new. And it is February the 5th, 2022, that the fruiting and the fullness and the flowering of the new moon shows up fully in your life. Though in the first two weeks after you get clues and signals about what seeds you're planting, they could become beast, beanstalks of goodness in February. Well, and <laughs> there is a delay in this lucky part with Jupiter trining because of his retrogradation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this idea for you, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising of what it's like to have a fresh new start in your third house. Now, this could be a sibling or an aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, or nephew that you have a new beginning with because maybe there was a falling out or a poor relationship status, it was a tractor, and you are going to get in touch. Funny enough, the third house is trips and travel by vehicles like trains, planes, and tractors. <laughs> so you may have a fresh new beginning as well in the first two weeks after the moon, especially where you're you're on a trip, basically, or you can take a trip somewhere. And that may also be a part of the larger picture of the fruiting in February. Third house stuff can be skills-based learning. If there's something you wish to learn, Jupiter is a teacher, the guide, the instructor, the guru. But it could be a teacher. He, he definitely can do that. He's pretty close to Chiron, which brings shaman teacher energy in. But for some of you, Geminis, this is very clearly an opportunity to learn. Third house skills-based learning in a trine by Jupiter. With the delay, though, maybe you have to apply. Maybe it's going to take time to get going because the delayed luck really fruits fully i think november 23rd 23rd right as he stations direct 24th as he stations direct all the way through until december 20th while he's still moving forward in the tail end of pisces now the pisces quarter of your sky is your 10th house of reputation and career a visible work that you do in the world and your ambitions for success so doesn't say it sound too bad to me you might want to go back to April, the last week or two of April 2021. Jupiter was also at the tail end of your 10th house, then piling up with Venus and the Neptune. So you could have felt some really good flow in your career journey uh, last half of April, last 21, 22, I mean, 2022, 2022. And then you get another flush of that November 23rd to December 20th. And uh, with Salacia on Jupiter, I think this is more acute. So I think in the first two weeks after the moon, watch out for someone in your larger friendship circles, spreading information about you, gossiping about you being a little bit less than discreet, right? Privacy or secrecy, they're different things about something you've told them and spilling the beans to others. That could be a side effect that's not so wanted of this particular two weeks that follow the July 28th new moon. Okay, let us continue on. Anything else for you guys that I would wish to disclose? Yeah, well, hmm. you know, the place where Jupiter's sitting is the house of his joy. So he's in your house, house of his joy. And that's a good place for you, your 11th house. This is where you really can reap some great financial gain from your career direction or some rewards like getting recognized, winning awards, being promoted, things like that. You have a lot of lusciousness up there. Um, this moon can propel some goodness in the first two weeks, but you're going back after uh, first two weeks after December, July 28th, you're going back over some old ground. Okay. Like you're literally, uh, you may go back to an old job or a promotion that was delayed or you got turned down, comes back to you or a raise that you were supposed to get that finally is approved. Some kind of mm, first two weeks of August, getting something to you that you deserve that was for you, that was maybe delayed as a benefit of your career path. Or a friend with a favor who kept delaying and finally delivers the goods. <laughs> Alrighty, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to get some water in a minute, but I'm going to do two more signs. Um, I drink a gallon of water, guys. People always, like sister jokes about it. Like, I've been like this all of my life. It's like, what was I? Some kind of stranded in a desert person in another life. All right. Um, July 28th. Yeah, okay, the moon. So, 
cancer, sun, moon, rising sign people. Now, first of all, before I even say anything about the moon and Leo, it's a lovely time for you with Venus traveling through cancer, making you feel pretty and happy and likable and friendly and sociable and magnetic and charismatic. So yay, cancer rising, especially with sun and moon are getting loved up by this Venus transit. And she is there until I think around I think August 5th or so in the, in the context of that luscious yay part of your sky, you've got this new moon in the money house, right? Your Leo corridor is your second house of earnings and possessions. And the way you secure the basic needs of food, shelter, water, the things we need to actually fortify our first house, because the second house kind of feeds the first. Now, this is a positive new beginning in your resourcefulness, and it is going to maybe not all of its leaves and fruit won't blossom maybe until February of next year when the full moon happens in this part of your sky. Let's keep that in mind. But you're getting seeds planted here. And this new moon is also sitting with Mercury, mercantile mar marketing and merchandising and business God in your second house. So there's that too. It's not conjunct exactly, but it's there. And good old series, the goddess of abundance is sitting with this moon as well. So there's definitely some a fruiting or abundance already baked into this moon for you. And uh, so this is about planting some kind of seeds of great resourcefulness financially, or, you know, getting the beginnings of the seeds that needed for some possession that you wish to uh, acquire, like a house or a car or whatever. <laughs> or a sofa, and uh, that's it's starting to take off. Now, Jupiter brings luck, and he's uh, expansion and growth. No matter which way, backwards, forwards, he's a lucky dude. And he's sitting on the day of the moon when it perfects in your 10th house of career, in the 10th house of the workspace that you're in, the collegiate space. If you go to work with, a, you know, you see people in the day, some of that's your 10th house, but it's more like your career. Like the job is the sixth house often, but the career itself, I'm a writer, I'm an astrologer. That's kind of the vibe up there. So Jupiter means that some people in power are favoring you usually. I mean, you could be in power, like if you own your own business, or something or you're very visible or you're running for office Jupiter in your 10th house can make you really powerful like you are king or queen like but it also can mean king and like queen like people in your professional endeavors are on your side giving you favor supporting you etc and so this is going to be a new moon I think of the two weeks that follow which is basically the first couple of weeks of August where you may get some kind of delightful support or favors or advancement from somebody in power in your field of endeavor, if not in your career space itself. So it's trotting the money house. So that looks a lot like a, a raise or bonus points on the money board regarding money earnings and career or finding a new job and getting way better pay, like just leaping forward. Now, because Jupiter retrogrades, there's a sense of delayed promise. So maybe the full goods won't show up until November 23rd to December 20th when he's moving direct. Now he will move direct though, when is this last two degrees, like his last two degrees of his home sign. And if he does end up back in your 10th house until December 20th, right? Um, but I really, I really like that part where he's in direct motion in the last two degrees of his own home sign. And that's your ninth house of foreign lands and travel, book publishing, um, higher education. And this is going to offer a lot of cancer people some positive momentum there. It's courts and legal affairs. If you need to judge to decide in your favor, two thumbs up for you in the fall of this year, especially as he's direct November 28th. <clears throat> It's all right, November 24th <laughs> to December 20th. Um, and I would also say that if you have any uh, need to do visas or passport stuff or legal stuff around travel, this also is strengthening things. When Jupiter is retrograde, travel slows down. And I'm going to be doing a separate retrograde video. You can expect world travel to slow down. But he will be going direct again in your ninth house of foreign lands. And that will be, again, an opportunity probably opening up in the third week of November onward for you to freely travel travel if say your country has restrictions or other countries put new lockdowns in place or whatever i see that freedom returning uh here in your sky particularly for you regarding travel maybe it's your personal circumstances cancer but you'll definitely be open to traveling and free to travel successfully and joyfully uh november 24th to december 20th and uh with the gossipy salacia bit that jupiter's entangled with um watch for some people in your workspace maybe not speaking uh, well of you or misrepresenting you. So be just wary of that in the first two weeks after the moon. I wouldn't worry about it in the longer arc of time. Now I'll do Leo and then I'll take a water break. 
Leo, sun, moon and rising. Well, obviously this is a big deal because it's happening for you. It's your yearly new start, fresh start, reboot, reset your odometer, you know, like back to zero. And so you're going to do a reset of some kind here regarding who you are in the world. Now, this is your idea of yourself, you know, the I am a housewife, a wife, a, a, a husband, a politician, a, like whatever you would fill the I am blank in. And it's how other people see you as well. So you may find that your whole persona and the way you appear in the world as that rising leo is changing and every year you get a renewal here so it's nothing new but this is a particularly lucky and auspicious renewal because of jupiter supporting it so keep that in mind um, so the reset is happening very dramatic energy perhaps because of the big boom that follows but it's happening in that first house of you and it's flowing trine fire energy coming off of that jupiter in your ninth house now this is a really good spot for developments that could inform a new you coming from father figures men in power or through, through ninth house features like professors or campuses or universities or learning in higher education environments book publishing and spiritual beliefs and faith, right? So especially with Jupiter here, this could be a renewal of a faith or a belief in yourself or in the way life works. And you may know the universe is a friendly place. All Leos finally figure out, yay me, you know? So there's some, all of those features are giving you a new you <laughs> that will be fully fruited around February the 5th, 2023 uh, into the two weeks that follow on the full moon. Because Jupiter retrogrades, uh, he will give you a promise and then he will delay the results is my humble opinion. So the day of the moon, he will retrograde like the moon perfects. And then like five hours later, four hours later, three hours later, he's retrograde. Technically he's retrograde only. Look at my notes. Excuse me while I check again. Yeah. So two hours after the moon perfects, he's retrograding. So it's basically... A retrogradation that starts right away so keep that in mind um because i think that we all feel like where's the where's the juice where's the luck where's my horseshoe this is a jupiter but i think it's a retrograde situation it's going to go back over old ground retrograding <laughs> retrograding in your ninth house but then i think the format of luck and ninth house foreign lands and travel that have been delayed now more delays there now he's going to be also supporting you in a forward forward way on november 24th to december 20th financially in your eighth house this could be stock investments taking off. This could be bank monies coming to you, return to you, uh, um, being able to secure a loan that is amazing, financing for something, business partner money or your spouse's money. So there's a lot of like money support, luck, energy, I think coming through the direct motion on the 24th of November to December 20th. It still ties into this new sense of identity for you. All right. And maybe a new birthing of a new kind of dharma ninth house real true purpose being on the reality train track of your truest calling or purpose or the dharmic path that you're here for so but the money stuff looks really good to me um, technically anyway november 24th to december 20th and it looks like a real boon for you financially if you stand to inherit from somebody that can be in a bequeathment if you have a delayed and inherent an inheritance coming through from um from his transit through there uh, in the first five months of 20, 2022. Now this is tidying up those loose ends on some bequeathment or money that was due you that you can also take finally possession of uh, in that November 24th to December 20th period. I'm gonna grab some water guys. I'm like having a hot flash and I'll, I shall be right back. All right, give me a five second uh, water break. I'm gonna pause the recording. I have a terrible feeling I forgot to draw a card for the last sign. <laughs> I'm back with my water. Okay, so sorry about that. But if I didn't, I apologize. But Leo, let's grab a card for you. I need to stick this card deck in front of my face, guys. What, welcome to my, I call it my meno brain, menopause brain. Alrighty. Uh, Leo's, what's your message? I don't believe I got you a card. Um, unknown territory. You're exactly where you need to be. Well, as I said, you're redefining your very essence and who you are. So an unknown territory really does fit. Alrighty. Um, you're exactly where you need to be. Moving forward into the next sign. It is time for the Virgo sun, moon and rising sign. My daughter is a Virgo rising. My son is a Virgo. Uh, my, my child's son is a Virgo son. He's an adult, but you know what I mean? I got a lot of Virgo. My best friend's a Virgo. One of my best friends. So Virgo for Virgo around me. So Virgo sun, moon and rising. I'm starting with a card so I don't forget. And we're going to check it out as 
discovering truth. You stand at the light of truth. You stand in the light of truth, not and, you stand in the light of truth. Okay, discovering truth. Well, we'll see how that looks in the actual astrology. So this is a new moon in the, one of the house of secrets. Can't make this stuff up. So secrets can be in the fourth, eighth, or 12th house. This is one of them, especially the 12th. These are deeper secrets and go, usually go like family secrets can be fourth house and your partner can keep sexual secrets from you or something like that, or business partner secrets or whatever in the eighth house. But the 12th house secrets can be really like things that you can't see because you've got blindfolds on, right? So maybe they're not even secrets. They're just unknown to you because you're not looking carefully enough. So this is your 12th house. And so there's something to be revealed. It's ultimately an essence, a truth. And it's going to be the two weeks that follow that maybe some of that comes to pass because salacia, kind of the gossip asteroid is with Jupiter. And even though it's a trine, there is some salacious energy. So maybe there is a truth that you're going to find out that comes through as gossip because the 12th house can be hidden enemies. So again, we shall see what truth is disclosed, what information is revealed. This You can stand in the light of the truth. It's not negative. It's like you stand strong and tall by being in the light or the face of that truth now there's a deeper truth involved in the 12th house because it is a spiritual and enlightenment -y house so what the heck maybe there's the, for any of you virgos on the enlightenment path you're standing in the deeper truth of enlightenment and you may be con connecting with god divine will um, enlightenment powers pay attention to your dreams here because the 12th, 12th house can bring you nightly dreams and this kind of event with this new moon in the first two weeks that follow you, you keep a dream journal you might have some really deep insights that come through your dreams and that you're able to see something about your life and yourself that you can't normally witness or get your eyeballs on now or your cognition around or whatever. Now, Jupiter, lucky dude, delaying the luck, I believe. Um, that's my humble opinion. I, I haven't heard any other astrologers talk about it this way, but it feels right, feels right to me. <laughs> um, he's going to retrograde eventually. Uh, okay, let's talk about Jupiter. He's in your eighth house of money that doesn't belong to you, particularly inheritances and money that comes from your spouse or business partner arrangements or bank loans or mortgages or taxes and tax rebates or, or stuff like that. Um, financial institution money, uh, stock investments. Now Jupiter is going to try to bring you money during this transit where he's going to be offering up more money than you normally would get for whatever reason that you don't have to work for. And he's been trying to serve up some of this money, you know, like a good soup <laughs> as he goes through since, um, oh my gosh, my brain, Sometime in May, I think it was around May 10th, he began to journey through uh, Aries and he will continue through there all the way through till next May with a hiatus, a little break in that part of the money story, okay, between the 28th of October and December 20th. But while he is trying to go through this zone, he's making you more rich if he can. And he could also get you involved in occult mysteries and magic and secret societies and conspiracy theories if you're prone to that, but eighth house stuff like that as well. Now, he will perhaps be delivering some of the best of this kind of new set, new beginning possibility from the 12th, um, kind of offering you some money that you want, basically, coming into your life between November the 24th and December 20th as he begins his direct motion in the last two degrees, two degrees of your seventh house which is Pisces. This is other people's money. Other, This is other people. And this connection to other people's money is often literally signing a document, a legal agreement, a contract, or negotiations around those things, legal paperwork, okay? So I'm just going to say it as I see it. For some of you, this is legal paperwork around bequeathment monies coming through November 24th to December 20th. But for some of you, it could be the bank loan, the mortgage, um, you know, sorting out the, the, the stock portfolio and taking possession through signing off with your broker on something, things like that, okay? But it ultimately leads to more abundance because of course Jupiter will then from December 20th till May of next year be moving through your eighth house, expanding, expanding, expanding your financial well-being. Also, in a lot of ways, because you're Virgo rising <laughs> uh, and you're very detail oriented and you like that kind of stuff, right? Um, I kind of would add to that, that you have this um, movement of money goddess Venus through the, during the time of this moon, through the house of favors from friends and allies. And just in the short time of the two weeks that follow, the first two weeks of August, you could get a promotion, a bonus at work, or maybe even 
up level of your financial well being through some female that you are involved with in larger group circles of belonging. You know, that's the best I can put my finger on that little two week window after the moon, what may be percolating there for you. Um, Anything else I want to say? The big boom will tell you a lot more about how that Venus will operate. So stay tuned for that new video coming out uh, probably within a day or two of when you fi finally get this one. All right, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. I do think I forgot probably one sign, probably Cancers. <laughs> I might add it at the end in case I forgot. So Libra. Well, you got fogged in, go slow, take time, go slow, take time. This new moon is happening in your 11th house of good spirit, where you will get things luckily showing up like pennies from heaven, friends, from favors with benefits, friends with benefits, friends with favors from your friends. <laughs> Okay, it is the house of Jupiter's joy. He's not there, but just keep that in mind because he is in a trine to this house. So he's in a trine to a place he loves to visit, that Leo 11th, sorry, 11th house, but it's Leo for you. So the first thing I want to say is that whatever this new beginning is in your 11th house, it may show up in the two weeks after the moon as a message, a phone call, or an email from a friend or some group, somebody in your larger social circles of, of belonging, not necessarily, you know, your life bestie from kindergarten. And um, this person may reach out to you in the two weeks after the moon and is positive and it's welcome information, news or whatever. And Jupiter is supporting that, it's hot here. Jupiter is supporting that uh, in a trine, fire trine from your seventh house of legal papers, work, signing on the dotted line, business partnerships, negotiations and vows, oaths and, you know, vows and oaths. That's why it's the house of marriages. But when we've signed a legal document, we're making a vow, right? A vow to uh, honor the contract, guys. It is so hot here. And I'm in front of an open window because it was pouring, but I'm still sweltering. Let me see if I can make it bigger open. It is muggy, like 30 degrees Celsius today. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Anyway, <laughs> like hot. I should have put a fan on. My, this is what happens to my hair when it air dries in humidity. Oh my God. So where were we? <sighs> Libra, go slow. Okay, take your time. Um, so Jupiter is wanting to secure some kind of opportunity, especially in the first two weeks after the moon, regarding a collaboration perhaps, or something good is happening with your significant other or a business partner. Now, the full Monty of what's going to be delivered to you through this moon, like the full deal, that's very likely to show up um, much more truly November 24th to December 20th, because we want to get Jupiter direct. He's stationing backwards as soon as this thing happens, this moon. And I like the fact that that direct motion is going to happen in your sixth house of the work you do in the world, the work routines, the work habits, your health as well. Good for all of that November 24th to December 20th. But I want you to really think about what might have been going on the last week of April, because it can connect to last week, last two weeks of April, 2022, to what's going on November 23rd, uh, as he goes direct to December 20th, okay? So I'm looking for that lucky boon as well as a delay in your sixth house. This is really good for getting a new job. If you're a Libra who wants to new job, who doesn't like her current job, his job, get ready for a new job. <laughs> or some kind of bonus in the workplace where the boss loves you up. Jupiter in the sixth house and promotes you or uh, does something special for you that's being seeded now. So things that you're doing in the two weeks, first two weeks of August, connect to some kind of money, potential success, career, work, boon. All right. But look as well for this new beginning in the 11th house. Like what is going on? Pay attention to your phone calls, emails, and text messages from people you know because Mercury's up there with this moon as well, that it shows up in the first two weeks of August, okay? I'm going to go get a towel and mop myself down. I am so hot. Welcome to my world, guys. I, I tried to wipe myself down. It's not a hot flash even. It's like muggy as all hell. You would think that that thunderstorm would have cooled it down a bit more. Okay, let's keep rolling forward. I think I've covered you, Libra. I hope I didn't, hope I gave you enough juice. The big boom is going to be really important because your ruler Venus is sextiling the big boom and it's going to be really offering up you some giant financial bonus points on the game board of life or financial shifts anyway. But we'll get to you on the other video on that detail. 
Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, sign. Let's draw you a card. I mean, guys, I mean, look, I don't even know what to do. I'm hardly wearing any clothes. <laughs> I'm so sweaty. All right. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising. What do you get here? All righty. Valiant courage. Take action with passion. How perfect for Scorpios, right? Huh. It looks like Vladimir Putin's a Scorpio rising. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. All right, take uh, action with passion, Scorpio, in the two weeks that follow this Leo new moon on the 28th of July, uh, understanding that there's luck from Jupiter, but maybe a delay. So let's say this, this is a new moon, new beginning in your 10th house of career. No doubt about it. This is all good for you, especially by February 5th next year, uh, two weeks next February, you'll see some real flowering in your career and reputation space. Your 10th house is how you see are seen by others and how you ambitiously strive for some kind of purpose and career and life attainment. And so this is getting a new set reset. So it can also mean a change of job, a change of career direction, but whatever it is, it's extremely, extremely powerful because Jupiter supports it. And he is a benefic or Santa Claus of the Zodiac. Mercury is up here at the time of the moon. So maybe you're going to get, and so is Ceres, the goddess of abundance of the harvest, a promotion, a bonus, a raise, or some good information coming through your work and career space in the two weeks that follow the moon, sometime in the first two weeks of August, in essence. Now, uh, you may find with the Jupiter trining from the sixth house of the co-workers, colleagues, or if you're the boss, your employee space, this is definitely for most of you Scorpios connected to work and career. Okay. You may also have health developments that are positive that support you as well, because Jupiter is in that part of the sky that represents your wellness physically. But I do feel that sixth house is mostly about work. And so for a lot of you, watch out for gossip in the workplace about you. It should be people jealous of your success. But other than that, in the first two weeks that follow, because of salacious gossip, I do think that you're just looking at some positive developments. Now they're seeded now in the first two weeks of the month of August, and they're going to be maybe some of the luck, the luck of it. November 24th to December 20th happens as Jupiter retrogrades, I mean, moves in direct motion around 28 degrees of your fifth house of luck. So a lucky break in your work, a lucky development, uh, just luck in general, but also maybe a lucky development around your uh, relationship with your romantic partner or pregnancy or children or a, a financial speculation that pays off. Whichever way, there's some really serious luck coming through later on that's embedded, entwined, and connected to this new moon in some way, okay? There's no two ways about it. You, But you need to take action with passion, remember that. So, you know, obviously uh, keep that in mind when it comes to the workspace environment, career space environment, and success and goals, as well as the work and the workday routines that the sixth house can represent. You're going through a tough time, right? You've got the south node moving through Scorpio, the house of you. It's like letting go of your old identity. It's shedding a skin. It's releasing the you you thought you were. So some of you, this new moon could mean by February, you're in a new career path, not just a new job. So keep your, your mind on those thoughts as well. Are you sure you want a new job or a development of a bonus in your career? Or are you looking for a whole re odometer reset in your career space? Hmm. Certainly higher ups are loving you up. The sun in the 10th. Uh, and that Jupiter uh, trining that in the, the six means like higher ups that people look above you in the workspace are uh, looking upon you uh, as leaderful, purposeful, and really appreciating you, especially in the two weeks that follow the new moon. Moving on, and don't forget, there is a big boom, and we're going to talk about that in the next video. That's in your relationship house to your marriage partner or business partner or your audience, clients, and other. But we won't do that now, but that's coming as a video after this one. Mm-hmm. Anything else I'd say to you? Certainly with that North Node transit through your seventh house, it's like, you know, pooper, get off the pot. Like when you're, if you're dating someone, it's time to get married, up level, up level. Um, you need to expand the container of your love and business relationships or your outreach to clients if you have them. That's what that North Node expansion is trying to do, but you're also feeling maybe graspy around those things. Yeah, so it's a lot of change coming for you guys with the big boom of Uranus North Node Mars. So get ready for that. Um, but I'm not saying it's all bad, you know, it can be exciting, actually. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Let's draw a card for you. I might be speeding up for you guys at the last signs because I'm too hot, but I apologize. <laughs> Just going to be honest here. Um, Fellow travelers, support is all around you. Isn't that funny? I do that for Aries as well. These are the fire signs being trined by Jupiter or, or in which Jupiter sits. That's interesting. Okay. Fellow travelers, support is all around you. So the moon 
is in a trine relationship to your identity as a Sagittarius. Jupiter is in your fifth house. This makes a kind of big fire trine in the sky, especially for you guys, because this new moon is at five degrees. If your ascendant is in the first 10 degrees of Sagittarius or your sun or moon is in the first 10 degrees of Sagittarius, you are part of a beautiful fire trine in the sky. Fire in the sky. It's pretty intense, you know? And this will make you feel really lucky, basically. In those first two weeks of, of those first two weeks of August, no matter what other hailstorms of reality are happening in the world, you feel really on top of your game. And so your card is support is all around you, which I also received for the Aries people. Now, where that support can come from Sagittarius is it's coming from Jupiter in your fifth house. And now these are your children. These are your lovers and sexual partners, romance partners. These are people involved in your independent business. If you have them, Jupiter here can bring you just frigging pure luck in a house of speculation. You guys are the ones that really can play that lottery ticket and win or go to the casino. Don't bet the bank. I'm not at your medical, your medic, not your financial advisor. I'm just telling you, this is a very lucky two weeks that follow the moon regarding like money that you can win basically. Now you do also have Mercury uh, in, and the moon itself in the ninth house, which I should talk about. Um, this is a very spiritual house, the house of God it has to do with your faith and what you believe is true in life it has to do a lot with higher education and travel and book publishing. You guys get tired of me saying the same old thing, but that's what's true about the ninth house. Um, the ninth house can be bureaucracy, red tape, visas, and having to get through court systems and court cases. So all of that stuff, new beginning, new start in your ninth house. And Mercury is there, information, emails, phone calls, right? So in the two weeks that follow, get ready for information coming through the ninth house prism right so if you're a student from your academia environment if you're going to court to win something from your lawyer or the judge if you are somebody in the book publishing world the agent says yes or you know what i mean or you get the contract to publish something so this is for you sagittarius is also foreign lands you get the two thumbs up the go to get that trip off the ground the luck that jupiter wants to deliver can perhaps show up to some degree in the first two weeks he will be retrograding and if it's going to be money luck or lottery luck it's because you had an old ticket in your drawer that you didn't realize you you hadn't scanned and it's still in the first year and you scan it and you won. That's what I mean by the delay. But there's a bigger delay possible. And that is that Jupiter will move finally into direct motion on the 24th of November to December 20th. And that can bring you a luck energy in real estate, okay, land, property. And that luck will then flow back into your fifth house of love and romance and children, you know, as well. <laughs> so I think that you're looking at for the first five months of 23. In fact, any of you Sages want to make a baby, man, those first five months of 23 are really positive for baby making, but also independent business taking off and love and romance flourishing. But in the meantime, yeah, look to something about property and real estate is positive and very lucky. Go back to the last two weeks of April of 22, because you may have a sort of a close call, but not quite. And then November 24th to December 20th, it's the real deal. The luck is blooming. And that new moon will fruit fully in February of 2023, where you're going to see the most goodness. Like, oh, so I just want to move to another country. So I just want to travel for a few months in another country. That book deal is now sealed and you know you have a deadline to get the fin thing finished examples 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 <laughs> anything else i'd say for you did i draw a card for you guys yeah support is all around you <laughs> all right um in the big boom which we'll be talking about next video you're going to have a lot of big boom around the workspace and also the health space in your life so we'll talk about that in a separate video Capricorn, sun, moon, rising sign people. So let's draw a card for you and then we'll move into the astrology, which they always seem to dovetail, don't they? Miracles, expect the wondrous to emerge. Now I'm jealous. <laughs> I am jealous of you guys. Capricorn, sun, moon, but especially rising miracles, expect the wondrous to emerge. Well, now the new moon itself, the new beginning is going to be happening in your eighth house of banks, loans, mortgages, financial investments, inheritances your spouse's or partner's money or your business partnership collaborative monies with some partner and this is a new beginning and a new reset mercury is here the god of marketing and merchandising so and mercantile and stock market so possibly this could be that long lost investment that you thought was dead in the water that takes off or you buy stock at its all-time low but trust me we ain't at the all-time low <laughs> oh my god another story to come 
watch for the October carnage in the markets. And, um, but in the meantime, <laughs> I'd say to you, you are having some money luck in those parts of the house of the story. This is inheritances as well. I know a Capricornus mom passed recently. Maybe there was a more of a bequeathment that he knew or a little ex extra money coming that he didn't see. Um, there's something like that. But there's definitely this kind of sense of bequeathment money could be popping for you as well. Now, because there could be some delay, I don't know how much of it, like in the first two weeks after the moon, you may have knowledge of money that should be coming to you. But I, I wonder with that Jupiter in his retrograde motion, uh, as soon as this moon happens, there could be some kind of holdup because Jupiter's in the house of the mother. Uh, for if your mom did pass, like my Capricorn friend, there may be some kind of uh, little details that have to be ironed out that doesn't don't free assets or money fully until November 24th to December 20th. Also, the fourth house is property, land, and real estate. So perhaps, for example, there is this thing that pops in the first two weeks of August for some of you Capricorns. It's very fortunate, like a miracle, and you're able to buy a house of your dreams, but you have to wait for the owner to move out. It's a private sale, but you get things rolling November, December or something like that or you get money that's due to you finally and then you have a chance to buy something but you wait until last week of november into third week of december or you move <laughs> jupiter moving through your capricorn fourth house of real estate is expanding your home but now he's retrograding so there's a delay um, but it often means a bigger home a larger home a new home a fresh home a better home rehoming in a positive abundant way um and we'll talk about the big boom in the next video. And that big boom is in your romance, sexuality, children, house. So there's a big tower-like energy hitting you there. Can't mince words, <laughs> July 31st, August 1st. Stay tuned for the next video uh, to go into that in some detail. Aquarius, me, sun, moon, and rising sign. Let's take a quick look at these cards and let's see if we can get us the miracle one like the Cappies just had. Ha. Huh. The great adventure. Well, I'll take it. Will you take it? Um, take a risk. Venture forward. Now, it doesn't have to be a physical adventure. It could be emotional adventures, money adventures. But there's a take a risk, adventure, great adventure. Venture forward. Okay, Aquarians. Well, we're fixed sign. We're stubborn and we like things to be steady as she goes. So let's see how well we're able to do that. Um, for the most part, though, um, we're Aquarians are a little bit better at the adventure, I think, than the stubborn Tauruses big stubborn Taurus. Okay, so moving forward, we have a new moon in the house of relationship. It's, it's as simple as that. There's a new relationship, a love relationship, a committed relationship, trying to be seated in the house of your seventh house environs and business partnerships as well, because I'm collaborating with a lovely young astrologer to, to do a couple of courses, but redo my sky reader with her, for example, in the fall and expand the course and have a colleague teaching with me. This is an example of a new collaboration or business partnership This being seated as I speak, but obviously the real seeds are going to show up truly around the 28th or so on the new moon in the two weeks that follow. But also a new relationship can start up for us Aquarians as well. And really the seeds are being planted, right? In the first two weeks of August. Now there can be a delay because Jupiter wants to bring expansion, growth, abundance, and luck, but he is just about to go retrograde in a fire trine from Aries on the time of this moon, the same day. So that means there could be more luck coming later, but a delay. So one of the things is that Jupiter is in your house of the local and neighborhood environment, your siblings, trips and travel, skills-based learning. So it, it parse it any which way you want. It could be that there's a new relationship, but it's online. That's the online world, the third house, and you have a distance between you, or that it uh, involves trips and travel to get to see each other or something like that. Um, now, the thing is, is that the third house is also the house that connects to the online world. And so if this is a relationship thing, you or like the, I'm teaching a class, so Jupiter is about being the teacher and using the online world. So there's delays that the real fruit fruiting of this doesn't really, really fly fully until Jupiter's direct, which is November 24th to December 20th. Look for some news information, like phone calls, emails, exchanges, um, even documents you could sign or agreements you can make that are significant in the two weeks that follow this new moon because of Mercury here. So the first two weeks of August, you may find that Mercury is participating in the new moon. So again, do you need to sign an agreement, a contract or document, or is there an email or phone call coming in that's important in the first two weeks that have to do with your business and love partners? Now, 
also for people like me who put YouTube videos out there, you're, you know, the audience marketplace for your stuff is your seventh house. It's 10th from the 10th. Therefore, this can be very much a new seed being planted and how you outreach to your audience and marketplace that you'll see the full fruiting later on when Jupiter goes direct in November. Lastly, I'd say that you're looking at salaciousness, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews gossiping about you. <laughs> Salacia in the third house, watch out for that possibility. Um, it could happen or whatever. Anything else you need to know? Um, well, we're not at the big boom, but it can lead to a change of location and where you live. And I would add to that, the big boom, boom is coming, that email, that recording is coming after this one. Um, you definitely have some luck coming in your money story. There's no doubt about it. Go back to the last two weeks of April and think of money and what money flow is happening in your life because it's replaying on steroids as Jupiter goes direct stationing at 28 degrees of the sign of Pisces in your money and earnings house. So this is a really lush, flush time financially for you. And some of this new moon is seeding that luck. Now the new moon in the house of business and love partnerships can also indicate some of that money flushness coming through your story can be because of money partnerships, business partnerships, and love partnerships that involve money things okay possessions as well because this is like you could get a new car a fancy new new environment some kind of possession you really want but, you know in the november 24th to december 20th luscious time of jupiter in this last time last third pass of your natal second house you know it was his third time being there he was there through there in may june july of 21 then he was back like the first four and four or five months of 2022. And this is his last call, <laughs> last call for money luck and possession luck and expansion. Okay. So yay us Aquarians. Last but not least, we will move to Pisces and then guys, I'm going to go take a nice cold shower. All right. Um, so, and I will draw a card for cancer. I think I forgot the cancers. Uh, so I'll draw a card for them and I'll point them this way. And maybe by putting a, uh, a note on the description box. Discover truth. You stand in the light of truth. I cannot believe I got that card twice and I shuffled. So Pisces, you need to look at the truth, discover truth, stand in the light of truth. This new moon, new beginning is in your sixth house of the daily work routines that you do and the work environment that you're in, as well as your health and health protocols, your sixth house of sickness. There's a new beginning and a reset here. It's a great moon for you every year to reset your health protocols in your life, to eat healthy, find ways to be healthy. Mercury messages and news and information. A doctor could say the blood work looks not so great. We need to do this change in your health protocols. Mm, you may have some news also about that because of Mercury being like a phone call or a text message or an email from a medical environment or a health environment, or if it's about your workspace, colleague and coworkers. A little bit of news coming there. But Jupiter's trying to luck you up and expand you from your second house of money uh, that you earn, or also food and things you put in your mouth, dietary stuff. So Jupiter here is trying to bring you into a cleaner eating style and food style. And with that trying to your house of sickness, for some Pisces, you're going to discover, oh my God, I'm gluten intolerant. Oh my God, my blood work shows I'm celiac. Oh my God, my blood work shows I'm, I have an allergy to legumes or something. Uh, in a not so detailed way, it just simply means that you're going to find greater fortune by paying attention to what you ingest. And therefore, you're going to be more healthy. And this moon is seeding that, especially the two weeks of follow right so maybe the light of truth is i love bread but i can't eat it all right because it's an earnings house jupiter is there and six house is a work house there's definitely some support from jupiter to increase your earnings now and the two weeks that follow this moon you may find that you're looking at plans and putting place, place things into motion to increase your cash flow and your earnings flow some of the real goodness of that does not come through until November 24th, until December 20th, in my humble opinion, because we need Jupiter to go into direct motion. He does that direct motion in the house of you in the last two degrees. So if you're a Pisces rising in the last two degrees, like, well, the last five degrees, 25 to the end of Pisces, 29, or the sun and moon, you could really find some incredible luck coming through your own choices and actions on November 24th to December 20th. But back to the idea of the money flow in general and, and it connected to your work and your health routines, you know, this is what you can really discover in those first two weeks after the moon. You can really focus on 
how to improve your financial flow. But hey, I mean, the sun, Mercury in the sixth house can be the boss or someone in power in the workplace is favoring you and Jupiter in the second giving you money. Because there's that retrograde though, promotion basically, higher wage earnings, um, new job. Because it's a retrograde, you may go back and apply for a job you applied before, you applied before, but they come back to you and go, we had your resume buried, we can't believe it, we love you. So for some of you Pisces, you get a job you had before or that you applied to before and it comes back to you and you get evidence of that in the first two weeks of, 2000 and, of August 2022. But the full fruiting and the yay of it really doesn't happen until February next year when this is the full moon in Leo. So you're building toward that as well. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. In case I forgot the cancers, here's your card. Maybe I'll put a trailer if I have time to say cancers go. Beginning a new cycle, cancer rising, sun and moon, first light. So I'll leave you with that and you can tie it into your reading if I if you see this at all. Thanks guys for listening. Don't forget, please like, please subscribe, hit my bell for notifications and make my channel grow with me if you would. I really appreciate it. I get about right now 600 new subscribers a month, which is so exciting for me. And I really appreciate every one of you who takes the time to listen. I will see you guys in the next video on the big boom. And that's going to be a humdinger. It hasn't happened since Alexander the Great died. So we're looking at something pretty rare in the collective sky and in each of our lives. All right. I'll see you guys on the next video. Ciao, ciao. And it would be good if I ended my video. <laughs>